Welcome to Rivet City. Please wait while the bridge extends. Hold it right there. State your business in Rivet City. And who might your father be? If he lives on this boat, I know him. Dr. Lee, eh? Well, then I guess you'd have to ask Dr. Lee for more information. Go on up, then. She's probably in the science lab. But keep your nose clean, you hear me? I suppose. The door on the left goes to the stairwell. From there, just keep heading west. Bannon and Dr. Lee and I all meet on Monday mornings to talk about citywide issues. It's pretty informal. The council doesn't have much real power. She's one of the members of the council. Runs the science lab here. Don't bother her unless it's important. Her lab is in the stern end of the ship. We're the safest, most secure city in the wasteland. Nothing can get in here without our say-so. Carry on, then. Don't. Look, this is a restricted area. I'm tired of telling you people. I... It's you. My heavens, you look so much like him. You're James's son, aren't you? What are you doing here? You were too young to remember, and I suppose James never spoke of me. Typical. I'm Dr. Madison Lee. I worked with your parents many years ago. Now, I run the science lab here in Rivet City. It was all I had left. When your mother died, your father decided to leave with you. He abandoned our work. We had no choice but to do the same. I suppose so. I worked with them for several years until... until your mother died and your father decided it was time to leave. What else do you want to know? James? He was very driven, determined to change the world. Well, we all were back then, I suppose. He was focused on two things, really. Making Project Purity work, and your mother. When she died, I think... I think he gave up. I know he wanted to keep you safe. But I think part of what he did was run away. But it seems that he never really was able to get over the idea. I'm frankly shocked that he waited all this time, and wants to try again. Yes, your mother was, well, she was a good woman, a very dedicated scientist. Your father loved her very much. It was a shame that she died. She had been excited to meet you. Complications from childbirth. 
None of us were expecting it. We weren't as prepared as we could have been. You have to understand, we were struggling with scavenged, derelict equipment. We did everything we could. Yes, well, uh, I'm sorry it wasn't enough. Okay. What? Well, I... I'm not sure what there is to tell. Your father and I, we worked together for a long time. I, I think we were really on to something. But then there were complications. The project was abandoned and your father disappeared. I returned here to Rivet City and established the lab you see before you now. Project Purity, we called it. What do you want to know? It was simple, really. Fresh, clean water for everyone. Such a simple idea, and yet so impossible to realize. The plan was to build a facility that could purify all the water in the tidal basin at once. No radiation, no muck, just clear water. It just turned out to be more difficult than we anticipated. We had the basic principles down, we understood most of the science behind it, but the radiation in the area is so pervasive. Small-scale tests were fine, but any time we tried to test the process on a larger scale, it was just... too much. Maybe if we'd had more time, or better equipment. You happened. It wasn't just you. We had more problems than we could handle already, but your birth is what finally pushed it over the edge. Your father decided that you were more important than everything we'd been working for, and he left. He left all of us. Once he was gone, the Brotherhood decided we weren't worth their time anymore. Without their protection, we had to abandon the purifier. This is the Rivet City Science Lab. It's taken many long years to put together, but we've done well for ourselves. Our work on portable fusion power and hydroponics are coming along quite nicely, if not quite according to schedule. Rivet City is one of the few bastions of civilization left in the land. We're working to rebuild our society, to make the world livable again. What do you want? You mean you haven't? I assumed he sent you here. For that matter, aren't you supposed to be in a vault? James said he left you there. Did you? I was under the impression that's exactly the opposite of what he wanted for you. Well, you won't find him here. He's come and gone already. Your father insisted that we return to work on Project Purity. I tried telling him too much time has passed. There's no way it would work. Predictably, he refused to listen to me. He says he can prove it will work and head it off to the old lab. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. It's in the old Jefferson Memorial Building, northwest of here. Please, don't go after him. It was foolish of him to even think about going there alone. Look, I don't want to be harsh, but I have problems of my own. I don't have the resources to support James's foolish endeavors or your chasing after him. I'm sorry. I suppose I can spare a few stim packs. It's not much, but it might make things easier for you. Good luck finding your father. Care. This lab is dedicated to solving- I've already told you everything I know. I don't understand why you're still here. The last I knew, he was headed back to the lab at Project Purity, in the old Jefferson Memorial Building. I still say it's dangerous, and he shouldn't have risked it. That's all I know. Good luck finding your father. Real prop.
Soon after we arrived, my nightly routine included sneaking into the restricted areas, searching for, I don't know, whatever I could find. It was a Voltec facility after all. The place was built with some of the most advanced technology this country had ever developed. Those excursions never turned up anything particularly useful. So, one night after a bottle of scotch, I broke into the overseer's office. It was easy enough to hack his console, gain access to the restricted files. Most of it was garbage. Propaganda, spy reports, just plain rambling bullshit, really. But there was one thing, one name that stood out amongst all the others. Dr. Stanislaus Braun. I knew of Braun's work, of course. He was a celebrity in his day. Voltec's sorcerer scientist, leading his peers and all of his technological wizardry. But it was in Vault 101 that night in the overseer's office. I first learned of Braun's involvement in Voltec's social preservation program and his work on something called GEP, the Garden of Eden Creation Kit. To be honest, the Gek sounded like pure fantasy, even for someone of Braun's capabilities. It was nothing short of a miracle. A terraforming module capable of producing life from complete lifelessness. But not only was this thing a reality, it was actually distributed to several vaults to be used after an atomic war. Vault 101 was, sadly, not on that list. I did some digging and discovered Braun's name on the reservation list for a Vault 112. And no slouch, but this man, he could have easily succeeded where I failed. Does his collected knowledge remain within the halls of Vault 112? Journals, hollow tapes, computer records, maybe even experiments. If I could gain access to just a fraction of Braun's genius, Project Purity would become a reality. I'm off to Vault 112 to search for anything in Braun's that might help me get this purifier up and running. All I know is that it's west of some place called Evergreen Mills, and it's well hidden in some sort of garage. But I'll find it. I have to. It's so close. But that's the story of Project Purity, isn't it? An eternity of almost theirs. Let's see if Braun has the missing puzzle piece.
I am at a loss. My beloved wife is gone. In her place is my son, small and helpless. As much as this place means to me, as much as it meant to Catherine, this is no place for an infant, especially an infant without his mother. It's time to go. The project was in trouble before, both internally and externally. Progress has come to a halt, both because our recalculations have gotten us nowhere and because the mutant attacks occur several times a day. I regret that it has come to this. I know that if I leave, our work may come to an end. Addison has never been on the best of terms with the Brotherhood. Aside from Scribe Rothschild, he'll tolerate none of them. If she's the one dealing with them, who knows what will happen? It breaks my heart to go. But I must put the needs of my child before my own. Purity in me. It's been close to 20 years since my last entry, since I left all of this behind to make a life for my son. We've spent that time in Vault 101, tucked away from the rest of the world. It wasn't perfect, but it was safe, and that's all I could have hoped for. Now my son is a grown man, handsome, intelligent, confident, just like his old man. <laughs> And as hard as it was to admit it, he doesn't need his daddy anymore. So, here I am, back where it all began. Project Purity. God, we wanted to change the world. We really thought the waters of life could be a reality. And that's why this is a momentous occasion. Because even after 19 years, I still believe it. Project Purity can and will be operational. This is just the beginning.
This is day two of my attempt to resurrect this project. I've got one of the portable fusion generators up and running, but it's just enough to power the emergency lighting and a couple of other systems. That will serve for now, but I need help powering up the mainframe. Time to visit Madison at Rivet City. I spoke with Dr. Lee Madison at Rivet City. It went about as well as I expected. That is to say, she thinks I'm completely mad. How can I blame her? She's got her own life, her own team, and is making real, tangible scientific progress. Here I come again, a very paragon of failure and false promises. But the reality is, I need Madison and whatever scientific team she may have assembled. I can't do this myself. Project Purity is bigger than me. It always was. And without Catherine, God, I can't let this die. Not again. Not like this. That batch of tests was inconclusive, but Madison and I are convinced it's a problem with the secondary filtration system. We're going to recalibrate the equipment and try again tomorrow, so that... James, please. I'm trying to work. Now's not the time. So that's the next step. Assuming we get the results we need, we'll move on to... James! Stop! I need to finish these notes. <laughs> we'll move on to diagnosing the issues with the radiation dampeners. That should... Ow! James! Now? We really shouldn't. <laughs>
attack on Well now, if it isn't the little saint from the vault. We've been looking for you. Someone's put quite a price on your head. What? You think you can walk around the wasteland doing the things that you do and there isn't going to be someone who takes notice? Such a shame. I hear that you could have been something useful. Ah well, time to die. <laughs>